I wanted to go over a vintage figure with you guys. As soon as I get it out of the bag here, I didn't pre-prep for this video. But, uh, I've had a Cobra Eel. A made in Hong Kong. He's got rusty screws, 1985. You know, this figure, there's nothing wrong with the figure. The rusty screws, you know, that's something I wouldn't want to keep. Uh, the rusty screws bothers me. And that's undoubtedly because somebody has sent this guy diving. Check him out. 85 Cobra Eels. Neat figure. A lot of people buying the vintage Eels will notice that... These guys have accessories that are very easy to lose. This one, as a matter of fact, has the backpack that's missing a piece. And he's got one swim fin. And that's it. So, I ran across someone who was selling reproduction accessory kits. If you go on eBay, finding the original accessories for the Cobra Eel isn't necessarily hard, but you're gonna pay somewhere in the neighborhood of around five to seven dollars per component that is missing. That adds up. You can buy a decent, you, you can buy another figure for what you're gonna pay for a few pieces of, uh, of, of gear for this guy. You've got two swim fins, the, I think this is like a regulator or something that goes in the backpack. The, uh, backpack. The air nozzle mouthpiece thing there. And the gun. So, you're looking at, let's say, uh, the price being a couple bucks plus uh, a couple dollars shipping. You know, you're looking at, you know, around four bucks a piece. Let's, let's quote this at $4 per component. You got one, two, three, four for the swim fins, five. You've got six components. And those six components, yeah, it's going to ring about 24 bucks if you want to re-gear your Cobra Eel. Well, these reproduction parts kits, the accessory kits... I think I paid like seven bucks for the entire kit. The uh, the swim fins look the same, but they're not the same. Reproduction, factory original, rigid plastic, flexible rubber. Personally, I like the rubber myself better. The mold marks are different on those. Uh, on the original, you have a, a mold number. Let's see if I can get it showing the showing the light there. There it is. You got a mold number. It's not going to focus on it, but you got a mold number on there, and it's rigid plastic. Um, differences between the backpacks, the reproduction backpack. It, it's not the easiest thing to tell in the photo, but it's, uh, or in the video, sorry, but it's a little bit rough. The, just the texture of the backpack is different. It's more rough, whereas the Hasbro backpack is very smooth all over. And I don't have a piece with me to show you, but the attachment piece for this here for this backpack the same way with it you know it's it's not extremely smooth plastic so I'm not going to use the repro backpack but I am going to use the reproduction uh, piece for the backpack if it'll fit hell it may not even fit it doesn't look like it's going to fit okay so it looks like I'm going to use the Repro backpack. This piece does not fit this piece. I don't know if the holes are different sized or... 
something's just not adding up. It does look like the reproduction has larger holes than the factory original. So we'll just leave that off. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do with this figure after I get his accessories assembled and everything put together. So here you have his backpack, all of it's together. That looks like it's some kind of a swim aid propulsion type piece that goes on there. I don't really know what it's supposed to be. Looks neat. So I'm gonna put the backpack on the uh, on the eel. See how it fits in the peg hole. That is not a good fit. The peg for the reproduction backpack does not fit the figure very well at all. It won't even go in. The original, the peg is more tapered and goes right into his back with no issues at all. So what I may do is just open up these holes at the bottom a little bit so that the reproduction piece fits on there or I may not I just I'm not a hundred percent decided yet but factory backpack I'll see if I can get a photo comparison of this this room has become kind of my my multi-purpose room with uh, my presses and everything for uh, making shirts and decals all inside of here as well as my uh, recording studio equipment where I record vocals for uh, for my band and uh, <laughs> my my room for Joe videos and pretty much whatever else so I'm gonna hold these up here next to each other you can see in my in this hand is the reproduction backpack this hand is the factory original you can see that the reproduction backpack has a larger peg than the factory original backpack. So there are some differences between those two pieces. Uh, I really wish I could put that on the figure, but it's just not gonna happen. This piece is also made out of a, a soft, flexible rubber. I've seen a lot of these broken and just not usable. As a matter of fact, looking at the factory original backpack, when that hose is made of plastic, you get stuff like this. This backpack has a piece of hose stuck in one of the holes. The rubberized hose plugs right in, pulls right out. There's no issues with this at all. See there? Yeah, that's not gonna be in there so tight that it breaks off. And this is flexible enough that moving it and bending it, it's not gonna break it. So let's put it on the face of the figure. It's a great fit, looks good. These little pegs on his face the uh, the holes in this rubber piece are a little bit undersized so that stays on very nicely I wish the backpack fit the uh, the peg hole in his back as well as the mask fits on his face this guy's got a little bit of paint wear this is an older figure that's seen some miles it's it's been in toy boxes this was not originally mine I picked this up from Hell, I really don't even know where I picked this up from. I think it might have been in a collection that I bought, but it was it's the only eel that I've ever owned. The only 85 eel. So let's check out the fitment of the rubber swim fins. The rubber swim fins are very loose in the feet. Peg is all the way up in the foot. And they just fall right off. So, since I'm, I can't gear my figure up with those reproduction parts. I've got, well, I've got one more, one more to look at here. 
Uh, I do not have a factory original to compare this with. I'll see if I can get a photo and put both of the photos up and talk about the differences maybe. Uh, but yeah, here's the, here's the reproduction gun that he came with. Some of the mold marks on the gun are going to be different and that's, that's common with all the reproduction parts. Like right back here, you've got a very unclean uh, piece of mold flash where it was broken off of the sprue. And that's one, that's one dead giveaway. That, that could be cleaned up, I guess. But um, there's also a, a lack of, uh, I don't want to say a lack of detail, but the, the reproduction parts are just not as clean as the, uh, the factory original Hasbro parts. They look good. They look fantastic from a distance. But, um, you know, that's just, that's just nature of the game. So what I'm probably going to do with this guy, since I cannot attach these new accessories to him, he's going to get reproduction packaging like some of the other custom and reproduction packaging that I've shown in the past there's a company that makes a reproduction card back and bubble for this figure they make uh, they make bubbles and cards for the entire 85 series the entire 1985 GI Joe series and this is gonna be the first one that I try myself Probably going to mess it up. I should probably buy a couple. I should probably buy two card backs and two bubbles just for when I completely screw this up and uh, have to send it off to my, uh, my friend from Instagram and have him mount it properly just so that it looks better. Uh, I'm not going to touch anything up on this figure at all for this display. And that's all this figure is going to be for. It's literally just going to be for display in my collection. I, I know that there's going to be some some screeching from some people as soon as they hear that. But, uh, you know, if, if this figure were solely for the purpose of my display and I was never under any circumstances going to sell this, which I, I'm never going to sell my collection. I'm never going to sell it. And if, uh, if some of these some of these guys, the excuses I've heard, well, what about when you die? What's going to happen to your stuff when you die? Well, I can promise you this. Before I die, I will burn every single piece in my collection. I will burn it just to keep it from getting out. And I don't, I'm not talking about reproduction stuff. I'm talking about all of it. I want to, I'll do it in a video before I die. I'll burn every single piece of it just so that there's no uh, there's no fear of of these uh, these controversial and evil reproduction parts getting out there in the, in in the wild. Nobody will be able to say that oh he uh, he's the one that bought that so it it's his fault that somebody got ripped off. Nah, it has nothing to do with that. I'll make sure that nothing ever gets out. But for my display, I you know what? I may just have this guy touched up. May have him completely restored and get him looking factory fresh. Because you know what? That paint wear, I, I was going to say that some of the paint wear added character to the figure. But now that I think of it, I've gone to the lengths of getting the reproduction accessories i'm gonna go to the to the lengths of getting the uh the card back and the uh the bubble i might as well go ahead and get the figure looking pristine for it too and i'll have a, a great display piece from a vintage figure For a fraction of the cost that a an original 1985 mint on card eel would go for a fraction of the price I'm perfectly okay with that you know most of this stuff back here is either uh, custom or it's factory sealed original pieces um, you know the way that the prices are going on some of this stuff it, these uh, these original carded figures with their accessories and everything they're just 
they're getting to uh, to that outrageous price point, and I just uh, I I'm not gonna pay it. You know, I have a tote full of mint vintage figures, and if they're just going in my display, I I really do not care if the uh, if the packaging is reproduction or not. It's for display, and it's not like you can't tell a difference. Those reproduction card backs even say on the back of them, reproduction. So, the uh, the accessories might not have reproduction stamped on them. Uh, they might not be in a different color than the originals. But I don't I don't want a different color than the originals. I want the original color. This figure is just going to be for display in my collection, and that's it. Um, I want it to be close to the original and look correct some people take it too seriously i think yeah these are plastic toys uh we have uh some rare pieces that are just unobtainable for the average collector so they they go with reproduction so that their piece at least looks right and uh you know you're not going to get the exact color match you're not going to get something uh, you're not going to get a reproduction piece that looks 100% like the original. It just isn't going to happen. Uh, it's a it's a difficult task, and if somebody can do it, props to them. That's uh, that's tough. But uh, the majority of uh, the majority of people that that participate in the uh, the reproduction accessories and parts and whatnot. You know, these people are not trying to rip anybody off. They are selling these parts for a fraction of the cost of the originals. They're not trying to pass them off as originals. Um, there are people that do that uh, that I've heard about. I've never seen... Well, I'll take that back. I've seen it on one to two occasions of someone trying to pass a, uh, a reproduction piece off as an original. Um, you know, there's, there's things that can be done in the uh, collecting community to... Uh, lessen the chances of that happening you know if there are penalties for someone who tries to screw somebody over like the entire community is gonna know their name and and everything about them uh, you know that's that's one way to deter anyone from doing it but I just don't see people doing that to each other I don't I don't physically see this happening as much as what some people claim that it happens um, you know that some people talk about a repro crisis or whatever but I don't see a crisis. The only crisis out there is the crisis being created by those who are staunchly anti-reproduction anything. Uh, they don't like reproduction. They don't like figures that are customized. They don't like third-party figures. Uh, these are the same people that bitch and piss and moan about, uh, you know, re repro or I'm sorry, third third-party transformers. And honestly, from what I've seen, um, the third-party Transformers are of a better quality and a much better price than the Hasbro original Transformers. Um, I, I wish that was the case with every single third-party G.I. Joe figure that comes around. Uh, take these guys, for instance. Uh, when I was a kid, I was a big fan of Steel Brigade and... Uh, Black Major Toys had a hand in manufacturing some of these. Um, they're they're custom colored uh, Steel Brigade figures, and you have this one molded in blue plastic. And I'm actually going to do a a review on this guy and another version of him. But you know the quality on this guy is great. Joints feel good. Elbows are tight. They're not so tight to the point where they're going to break if you move them. But their elbows are tight. Knees are tight. You know, these are good quality figures. Buy them. Put them in your collection. And enjoy them as these things are meant to be. Enjoy them as a collector. Collect the shit out of them. Buy them. You know, that's just like these guys. You know, oop. <laughs> uh, yeah. Luckily, it didn't break. It bounced off the table pretty hard. But like this guy, I mean, he's got rusted screws. He needs cleaned up. And if I'm going to use them for a display piece then I'm probably going to have the, uh, the paint, the paint wear touched up a little bit on him just to, just to make him look better.
And like I said, he's he's going to be a piece for my display. I'm never going to sell this. Uh, I know this video is probably going to get some uh, negative feedback. But uh, I just wanted to talk about it a little bit with you guys. And um, show you my first endeavor with reproduction parts for a figure. This is the first time that I've ever bought reproduction parts for any type of figure or anything. And you know, it's just a fun little fun little piece that I want to put together and, um, you know, just stick it on the shelf. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that you subscribe. I hope that you like the video. Um, check out the other videos that I have. This is probably the only time where I'm going to get into or touch on the, uh, the repro conversation. It's, it's just not a conversation that I see for the most part being, uh, being productive or, uh, necessarily positive in all circumstances. But right now, unless you turn off the video, you're a captive audience. You're, nobody's going to sit here and argue with me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just putting an opinion out there. So like I said, subscribe, check out the other videos and let me know what you think guys. Thanks for watching.